Today I'm going to be extensively testing the break error handler within make.com. And that is to right click on any module like this, which is an external call to Claude. So when we're calling external APIs, they may return with an error and it might only be temporary. For example, Claude and OpenAI's GPT-40 are really heavily bombarded because they're very, very popular APIs. So they might temporarily respond with an overloaded or server error. And then if you just waited a few seconds or a minute and do the call again, then it should work. However, if you do not handle this error properly, then it will just error out the scenario. And if you have a very complicated or long scenario where there's a lot going on, it can be quite costly to have to rerun these scenarios over and over again. So I'm gonna test this today. So how does a break error handler work? We right click, add this break error handler, and it comes up with this panel to try to automatically complete the execution and the number of reattempts and the interval between attempts in minutes. So this is auto retry functionality. In order to test this, I'm gonna add one minute as the minimum interval, and then I'm gonna ask it to reattempt three times. Now, there is an issue is that most of the time Claude will work. So we need to find some way to actually test this scenario properly and to have a way to mock up these kind of errors so that we can test this at scale. So we want to test this five to nine error but we want to do it in a way that it will be pretty predictable instead of calling it an external service. So I've created a build ship project where I can very quickly create that API endpoint. And this is a very good low code tool that you can use. Bear with me for a second as I do this, but so I have this new project set up, simulate response based on response code. The starting trigger here I've added as response code is this. So what we're doing is, we're gonna pass it a request. So this is the exact response code that we want it to send back to us. So we're just sending it a response code, it's gonna send that back to us. And 50% of the time it should respond with this five to nine response, which is the similar response to what we're getting from Claude. So let's just test this out just with a five to nine response as it is. Press okay. And I think this is already set up. So we have the response code set up here. I've added a new input. So it should take this input here and then in response or for status code, it's just going to get that local variable and respond directly with that. So make sure that's shipped. Okay, we'll click run once. Workflow not found. Let's check why that is. Press save. Oh yeah, for some reason copy is at the end of that. Press save again, run once, and let's see what it responds with. Okay, we get a 529 error. Let us put in 200. So that should be a successful response. Okay, status code 200. So we now have a, a way to successfully mock up errors and successful responses. So what we can do is we can use an if statement here, if, and then go to random. If random is less than 0 0.5, then respond with, so we'll do a semicolon, respond with 529 which is the error we're getting back from Claude and otherwise respond with 200, which is a successful response. So we'll click save, we'll run that again. So we should start getting random responses of either 200 or 529. And then this can be the basis for us to properly test this break error handler. So again, the first response there was an error. The second response was success. Okay, this is what we want. So we'll click save. And now we're gonna go and test the break error handler. So what we do is we right click, go to add error handler and select break and attempt. So we're going to attempt a maximum of three attempts and interval between attempts is one. Before we do that, I want to actually test this in a way where it will at least do something in an external system so we can properly test the output of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it to add the result to a Google Sheet. I'm just gonna get it to output a random number onto the sheet that then we can reference after. Right, so what I'm gonna do is we're going to go to Google Sheets and add a row. I'm gonna to go to this untitled spreadsheet. I'm gonna copy and paste out the ID from the spreadsheet and copy it into here. That was the ID from the URL. And I'm gonna type in sheet one, column range A to Z, and then values A, we're just going to put in random. It's gonna be a random number and we will delete this breakpoint for the moment. Let's just test out to make sure this part actually works. Testing break error handle. Okay, I'll click run once. Right, that worked. We have a new random number. I can reference that, that the random number was this. Looks good. Let's just make sure when we get an error, 
what happens to all successful responses there. So we have a few results. Okay, there's an error, right? That did not add the response or that did not add a new row to the sheet as expected. So let us add a break error handler here and number of reattempts interval between attempts equals one. And let's see if this works. So that break error handler will then hold this scenario in an incomplete execution mode. And then after one minute, it should reattempt that. So let's click save. And in order to save that, you need to go to scenario settings, click allow storing of incomplete executions and click okay. Then press save again. And now let's try it. Click run once. Now we have the error. Excellent. So let's go back, go to incomplete executions. Then this should start reattempting that in about one minute's time. So we can wait for that to happen. Okay, so I've waited a few minutes and that has not resolved. It's, it's still showing up as zero attempts. Nothing has happened. Let's go in and have a look at why that might be. On the right hand side, I see this, I'll move this over here. On the right hand side, I see the incomplete executions here. So I'm gonna click on that. And then I see this reason for interruption 529. I'll try and run that once and it worked. So this is down as successfully resolved, but it did not attempt an automatic retry, which is a little bit concerning. I'm just coming back to this video during editing. And that is that throughout a lot of this video, the automatic retries did not work for me. And that was because that the actual scenario was not turned on. So if you manually run scenarios, it does not matter what your interval is here, the number of minutes. It will ignore that if the scenario is turned off. So you have to have the scenario turned on. That can be at regular intervals or it can be on demand. If you click on demand, it will activate that scenario and then automatic retries will work from there. So that's really important. Otherwise it will just not work. Throughout the rest of this video, I am manually re-attempting the execution. So I'm manually going into the incomplete executions and pressing run once. That's doing the same thing as what happens when it attempts the automatic retry. So that's just to let you know what I'm doing throughout this video, but it should have the exact same functionality. Manually clicking the button to reattempt the scenario will allow us to very quickly test the breakpoints a lot quicker. Otherwise, we'll be waiting all day long to test the automatic retries. Let's try this with a few other cases. I'm going to build out this scenario a little bit more. I'm going to clone these modules. So I'm going to clone this module and then see if it can automatically reattempt multiple cases of this. So if it can, if it breaks once, will it save the execution again? So I'm going to paste that module paste it into break again, copy and paste, link that to this and click save and work from there. So what I wanna test here is if we get a successful response for this and a successful response for this, but then an unsuccessful response for this, will it still persist the data from the first two modules into the Google Sheet? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go set variables throughout this, so I'm gonna go set variable and variable name is, you know, first var one, two, three. Okay, then I'm gonna set another variable, which is here, set variable, Second var, then I'm gonna print those to the sheet. So first var and then second var. Then I'm gonna update the sheet, first variable. Okay, I'll click save and then we will work from there. So click run once, okay, that has broken. Again, there's a 529 error. The data was set in the queue of incomplete executions. Let's go in and try to resolve that. Fail again, click run once and it successfully responded with all those. Let's see what happens. Okay, so in this case, it failed the second time, succeeded this third time, but then continue through here, successfully pass this request and successfully pass this request, and then went to the Google Sheets and that all worked. What I want to check is if this fails and then breaks, and if this fail and breaks, then will that work? And will that persist the first value? We're gonna to need to test that a few times just to see if it works. So I'll go to build ship, I'll click run once. Okay, that failed on this attempt. So we'll go into here, go to resolve. We need to check and store, check that in the incomplete executions and click on this. Click run once, it failed again, click run once, and then that worked. Okay, it saved the values in for first variable and second variable. That means it broke the next times it did not process the first few here. And then from then on, it did save those values. So that's encouraging, that's what we want. Now I want to test using break functionality in the iterator and aggregators because this can be a little bit more complex. Let's just say we're gonna parse some JSON here. Names, Alan, David, John, that should be valid JSON, I think. Press save, oops, I'm gonna actually delete this, delete that module. JSON, the parse JSON will be the first module there. Run anyway. Okay, now we have an array of names. Perfect, so I'm gonna use an iterator. Iterator, the array will be this array of names. And then we're going to aggregate that together. This is a very contrived example, but this is 
where I'm going to test the break scenario within this really basic iterator and aggregator setup value. We're going to aggregate that value. And then, whoops, I'm going to paste the value of that back into the Google Sheet, this iterator aggregator. So I'm going to add those into this fourth column here, then the response of this text aggregator. So what it's going to do is we have this array of names, Alan, David, John, it's going to iterate through each of those, then aggregate it, and then add it to Google Sheets. That's basically doing almost nothing. When I've tested this just to make sure that will work correctly, this will then print to the sheet. I'll add a breakpoint after just to check if that break functionality works. Let's just start from here, click run once, and right, so that's that has worked correctly. It's separated all those together. Show advanced settings, row separator, other. This in as a separator for those, so they show up a little bit nicer. And okay, perfect, that's what we have. Now, what happens if we add a breakpoint in here? So I'm gonna take, kind of copy this, shift and click. Copy modules, I'm going to paste that directly into here. All right, click save. And now let's see what happens. I'll click run once. So we got a 5 to 9 error. That's save in the incomplete executions is the good question. Yes, which is this. What happens if we try to run that again? The operation failed. Let's try again, try again, let's try again. <laughs> okay, it worked there. And that did work. So when we tested that within the iterator, it broke within this HTTP request, but the breakpoint actually tested the full aggregator, the full iterator and aggregator as a whole. What happens if we add in a few more of these? Okay, now we have three breakpoints. Okay, I'll click run once. All right, that worked the first two times, but then did not work the third time. Let's go into that. Let's click on this. Okay, I'll save the scenario. Go back to incomplete executions. I'll go to this where it's not been resolved. And okay, we see the reason for interruption is that. Click run once, click run once again. So you need to keep clicking run once. If there's an error with any of these, then it will actually have to go back to the start of the iterator and go through each of them again. So let's say if you have an iterator with like 10 different rows, if it breaks at any one of those, it starts the iterator again, which is not ideal to say the least, but let's try and get this to actually work. It may not work because there's so many of these. If you have a lot of calls to external modules within iterators and aggregators, then if it's a very unreliable API, there's a chance that you will just get stuck in a feedback loop of where it will just not be able to complete those. So that's not ideal. For a service like Claude or OpenAI, sometimes they break, sometimes they don't. So if you just get one error every now and then, it might be fine, but if there's a lot of errors, this is not ideal. So as a result of this testing, I would recommend that the break error handling seems to work reasonably well when you just have a single flow of a scenario. When you start using iterators and aggregators, it just seems that Make just did not design this to work in the way we want it. So that this does not do a single auto retry functionality. I'll try this with a much simpler scenario. Last time around, we just have two and we're going to delete this last module here like so do you know what i will actually add this one back in copy paste this will take quite a few attempts for this to work because it's going to go through this twice and then we'll break multiple times but let's try this just to make sure it does work it's the last test of the iterators and aggregators okay it failed on the second attempt failed again here let's keep clicking run once run once this will eventually work keep clicking I'm using lots of operations here to test out this Okay, it worked. Let's have a look at that last scenario there. So after breaking many, many times, it eventually did work. It broke multiple times on each of these breaks. Eventually worked because we, we kept pressing that button again and again and again. And then eventually came back with the correct two names from the start of this iterator and aggregator and left the aggregator successfully. So that is encouraging in a way, but it's still not ideal. If you're gonna get a lot of errors, this could be an issue. If you're on a kind of a single workflow like this without iterators and aggregators, you could add a break error handler to practically every single external API that you're getting, that you're interacting with, such as Claude, Google Sheets, whatever it is, because every single external API could break at some point. And some APIs are a lot more reliable than others. For example, Google Sheets is way more reliable than any of the AI APIs, but Google's APIs can go down every now and then. It's just that it's more important to add these kind of error handlers to less reliable APIs. An alternative to calling Claude or OpenAI from within make.com is that you can use external services like OpenRouter. You can actually build out your calls to them directly within Billship, for example, and then have exponential back off to automatically retry. 
there are a bunch of different options. You could even create a separate make.com scenario and then call that, which then has its own better error handling within that. But all of those are a little bit more complex. If you can get away with using break error handlers, that's at least a good option. And it's the simplest one to start with anyways. If you want to get more practical automation tips like this, then check out the link in the description to our community. We'll get access to all of our automation templates. Members get instant access to all of these courses to get you way ahead. And we've got weekly workshops where you can get your questions answered right away. Thanks for watching.